This franchise staple has a lot of potential, but suffers from often being unable to realize that potential. Today we're going over Gandhi, his leader ability, and any bonus that might come from India as a civilization. I'll go over my preferred way to play as Gandhi, as well as give him a final score for the various victory types. Gandhi, as you might have guessed, is all in on the religious victory, and he can do religion extremely well. His ability, Sat Satyagraha, gives so much faith to use to win through religion. You're going to get plus 5 faith for every sieve that you have met that has founded a religion and is at peace. And this includes yourself, so as soon as you get a religion, as long as you're not at war with anyone, you're going to get a plus 5 faith per turn. This means... In a normal game, you can normally ramp this up to about 25 faith per turn, since some civs are going to be wanting to war anyway, but 25 extra faith per turn is fairly significant. Missionaries and apostles aren't cheap, so having this extra faith really helps Gandhi, especially if you're not playing with any of the game modes so that you can get Void Singers. More importantly to Gandhi, however, is India's Dharma ability. Any religion present in your city provides its follower belief and provides an amenity for each religion. You can get 5 amenities per city this way if you manage your religious pressure just right. Not only that, follower beliefs are usually very strong. Things like work ethic, choral music, feed the world, reliquaries, all of these are follower beliefs. This means that you can get production, culture, food, faith, all of these things from religions that are present in your cities. More importantly, Dharma gives you plus two spreads to your missionaries, making all this faith that you're getting go even farther. All of this sounds great, but that doesn't always translate into being great. With religious leaders, getting a prophet is the most important thing, and India gets zero bonuses towards getting one. Start a game with Saladin, and Byzantium, and even Russia, and then you're going to lose. You're not going to get a religion, and without one, you're depending on the AI to send their religions to you, and then you have to go for a culture or a science game. You never want to depend on the AI for anything, and Gandhi is very clearly flavored into going for the religious game. Not only that, Gandhi has to spend all of his early production getting a city. You need two holy sites to be competitive for religion on deity difficulty, so you're going to have almost no defense. You have no early game bonus to keep you safe. Yes, Indy gets the Varu, which is an amazing unique horseman, but spawn next to Julius Caesar and you're going to realize just how far in the tree horseback riding is. Defensive techs are far away from the holy sites you need to get to get your game up and running. I know in my Chandragupta episode I talked about how amazing the Varu are, but they're amazing for Chandi because you don't have to get a religion. As Gandhi, you need the religion, but you also need the Varu to keep you alive, so it's very difficult to have both at the same time. Gandhi goes very deeply for those religious victories, and he can get one very early in the game. You do, however, need to get a good spawn to make him work. You need to build a scout into a slinger, into a settler, and play a very greedy game, then hopefully rush two holy sites out. If you get a religion, you're set. You expand defensively towards religious sieves, let them spread to you, you get your religion in those cities after you build a missionary from those cities. The key here is to have your core cities with a religion, and then border cities with foreign religions. You build missionaries of those foreign religions and use them to spread one time into each of your other cities as possible. You don't want to convert your own cities. You just need one follower from that religion in your city and you'll get the bonus. Once you get to theology and you get the Mahabodhi temple, just like every other religious leader, you're going to build waves of apostles and send out missionaries to win the game by like turn 150. But you'll be, you'll have sort of a better time doing this because you'll have multiple religions powering you through. But like I said earlier, you're going to be re-rolling a lot to make this happen. Gandhi does not win every game he spawns in. It's really difficult to win with this leader. As far as religious victories go, Gandhi gets an 8 out of 10. Just because you don't get a guaranteed profit and you get no help in the early game to get you there. If he had any sort of bonus towards getting that great profit, I would give him a 10 out of 10 for a religious victory. 
but Divine Spark is mandatory on Gandhi. Either Divine Spark or hopefully you get a relic in a goodie hut and you can get religious settlements. Without either of those things, getting a getting a profit is pretty difficult if you have random maps with some religious sieves rolling in the game. Culture comes next. You get a lot of religious bonuses towards world wonders and culture through your follower beliefs. So you can reasonably get a good culture game going. So I'm going to give Gandhi a six out of 10 here. Science is a little weird. You get a lot of growth and you can get good production from work ethic. You also get Jesuit education if the AI gets it, but you never want to depend on the AI to help you in the game. So five out of 10. Everything else isn't worth going for. 3 out of 10 at most for both Domination and Diplomacy. Gandhi's really strange. If you have the skill to play him right, he can be an A plus Civ. However, by the time you get your religious game plan in place, you often won't even be utilizing the bonuses from your ability very much. Religious games get done fast, and they really only depend on getting a profit, expanding for holy sites to get more faith, and then pushing out waves of apostles and prophet, er, missionaries. Since you're most likely going to be wiping out religions before they expand to you, you won't use his bonus very much. Anybody can really play the same religious game that Gandhi can. And some people play that game better since they get free great profit points. What sets Gandhi apart really is the little bit of extra faith he gets, which most people can get through Void Singers at this point, and the plus two missionary spreads. That's really what makes Gandhi very good at the religious game. You're saving yourself faith on those profits, or those missionaries, sorry. I'm gonna give him a C. He feels like any sort of great profit bonus would skyrocket him, but as of now, he's just a boring leader, and Chandragupta is much better as India, in my opinion. Thank you everybody for watching, and let me know what you think about Gandhi in the comments down below. I know some parts of the community really think he's amazing, but for me, I struggle every time I load a game with Gandhi. As always, I'll be back in the next one, where we're going to be talking about Genghis Khan and Mongolia. Goodbye.